Hey everyone, welcome back to Trivia Thursday. This is a quiz show where you'll get to try your hand at five different types of trivia about all kinds of different types of science. My name is Luke, I'm going to be your host today, and without any further ado, let's get started on our first question. Our first question today is about earth science. Earth science is the branch of science that deals with the earth and the things that make it up, like rocks. Our earth science question says, what are the three main types of rocks? Are they sandstone, mudstone, and quartzite, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, petrographic, microscopic, and macroscopic, or gray, red, and brown? I'll give you a minute to think about it, but while you're thinking, see if you can eliminate any answers you think are definitely wrong, and then guess from what you have left. Okay, the correct answer to our first question is igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. These are the three main types of rocks, and they're based on how the rocks are formed. Igneous rocks are formed when lava or magma cools. Lava, by the way, is melted rock that's on the surface of the earth, and magma is melted rock that's underneath the earth, in a magma chamber somewhere. When lava or magma cool, they form crystals, and when these crystals all form into one big chunk, you get a rock full of minerals. Sedimentary rocks are made up of little pieces of rock material called sediment. These little pieces of sediment that could be bits of old rocks, bits of minerals, or even things like bits of organic material are all compacted and cemented together, usually by water. So maybe the water flowing through a river or the water in the ocean. Metamorphic rocks are formed when igneous rocks or sedimentary rocks undergo a change because they're put under super high temperature or high pressure conditions. So one way this can happen is if an igneous rock or sedimentary rock were buried way down kilometers deep in the earth. Now that we've learned a little bit about earth science, let's move on to our next category, which is neuroscience. Neuroscience is the branch of science that examines the brain and how we can think things. Our neuroscience question says, how many neurons are there in the human brain? And before I show you the options, I want to talk about what a neuron actually is. Neurons are special cells in our body that are able to pass on messages using electrical signals. Neurons pass on messages to other neurons nearby. So when I touch this toy car, I can feel that I've touched it because neurons in my finger are sensing it and sending a signal that goes all the way to the neurons in my spinal cord, which goes all the way up to the neurons in my brain that tell me that I can feel the car. So we've got a ton of neurons in our body, and the question was asking, how many neurons do we have in our brains? So your options are 450,000 neurons, 72 million neurons, 86 billion neurons, or 163 trillion neurons. These are some absolutely huge numbers, so I'll give you a minute to think about it. I hope you picked an answer because I'm going to give it away now. The number of neurons in the human brain is 86 billion. That's a lot of neurons. If you want to know an animal that has more neurons than a human, you have to think big, really big. So one animal that has more neurons than a human is the African elephant. And the African elephant has about 257 trillion neurons in their whole bodies. We're going to move on to our third category today, which is physics. Physics is the type of science that deals with how things move and behave. And one thing that can move is light. So our physics question says, what is the speed of light through air? Do you think the answer is 30 meters per second, 3,000 meters per second, 300,000 meters per second, or 300 million meters per second? I'll give you a moment to pick your answer, so think about which one of these numbers you think might be the distance that a wave of light could travel in only one second. Okay, time for the big reveal. The answer is... 300 million meters per second. That's crazy fast. To show you how crazy fast that is, 
I want to compare it to a few other things. The fastest running man in the world, Usain Bolt, can run at a top speed of this over 12 meters per second. Some of the fastest high speed trains in the world can travel at this over 100 meters per second. Sound waves can travel through the air at about 343 meters per second, but if they're traveling through water, they can travel at up to 1,500 meters per second. The entire Milky Way galaxy is moving through space at around 550 meters per second, and even faster at 300 million meters per second is the speed of light. To be fair, if light's traveling through water, it becomes a bit more of a slowpoke, only traveling about 250 million meters per second. That's only about 20 million times faster than Usain Bolt. We'll move on to our fourth category now, which is oceans. Our oceans question says, what causes the tides in the ocean to rise and fall? Is it the Earth's rotation in space, the extra water coming in from lakes and rivers, the pull of the moon's gravity, or the melting and freezing of ice caps? Take a moment to think about it. And if you want another moment, feel free to pause the video too. So, the correct answer is the pull of the moon's gravity. It's the moon that causes the tides in the Halifax Harbour and everywhere else on Earth. But how can the moon, way out in space, affect the tides here on Earth? To explain that, we gotta talk a bit about gravity. Gravity is a force that pulls objects, people, apples, dogs, anything, towards things that have lots of mass, or things that are heavy. So the Earth has lots of mass, so the Earth has a gravitational pull on everything around it. The Moon is also huge and massive and heavy. So the Moon's gravity pulls everything around it towards the Moon. So now let's think about the Moon as it revolves around the Earth. As the Moon is orbiting Earth, look at all this water underneath it. The force of the Moon's gravity on that water is enough to just pull it towards the Moon a little bit, stretching the Earth's oceans into an oval shape. In areas between where the tides are being pulled up, the tides are falling because they're stretched out. One more interesting thing about the tides, while the moon is the main thing that causes the tides, the sun also plays a role. So if the sun and the moon are lined up in this the right way, they might be able to make a really high tide. Or if the sun and the moon are pulling in opposite directions, they might make a lower than normal tide. We'll move on to our fifth and final category now. And last but not least this week, we have biology. Biology is the branch of science that looks at living things. Our biology question says, what is the scientific word for chewing? Is it mastication, ingestion, phagocytosis, or carnivory? I'll give you a minute to think about it. These are pretty huge words, so don't feel scared to take a guess. Okay, I'm gonna reveal the answer, and the answer is mastication. Mastication is the word that biologists use to describe chewing. And you might be thinking, why do these silly biologists even need a word to describe chewing? Chewing is simple. You just chew your food when you eat it. But chewing is actually something that's super important and that's really interesting. Chewing, or mastication, is how we humans and other animals that chew break up our food into smaller pieces before we digest it. Inside our bodies, we have things called enzymes that digest our food for us. And it's a lot easier for our enzymes to do their job if our food is in little tiny pieces with more overall surface area. There are some other animals that don't chew, like snakes, and they have to have other ways to digest their food. That was our fifth and final question today. I hope you had fun playing, and I hope you learned a little bit about science. If you enjoyed this, you should share this video with your friends. Maybe see if you can beat your score. And you should also check out Supernova's other online programming, including lots of science videos, webinars, and even virtual camps in June. Before you go, I want to show you the answer to last week's bonus question. Last week, I asked you, how many young scientists did Supernova reach last year? And the answer was over 13,600. This week, I've got another bonus question to ask you. 
My new bonus question says, where is the farthest from Halifax Supernova traveled last year to deliver outreach? Was it Yarmouth, Nova Scotia, Lennox Island, PEI, Natuwashish, Newfoundland and Labrador, or Sudbury, Ontario? For the answer to that bonus question, check out the bottom of the video description. My name's Luke, thank you for watching this episode of Trivia Thursday.